Hi, I'm Dr. Parikh, and we're talking now about creating a research question. Uh, this is an exciting thing to do. It's you really saying, what would I like to study here? Um, it's also a really important step for the rest of your paper, because if your research question is uncooperative, the rest of your paper is going to be a giant pain in the neck to write. So I've worked really hard to make, you know, to let you have some choice, to let you make, you know, make decisions and play around with things, but in a way that's not going to have you really, really unhappy later. Um, the first thing, as I often say about this paper, is to be okay with okay. Um, students, you know, the students who are excited about psychology and excited about research often kind of feel like a kid in a candy store of, I'm going to write this amazing paper and I'm going to design this really cool study. You, sorry, you are probably not going to design a very cool study. You are going to design a very easy to talk about study because as much as I love cool studies, you don't get points based on how many, how cool your study is. You get points based on how well you can describe and talk about your study. And so it's important that your study fits into some parameters. Um, one of those parameters is that it has to include at least one validated measure. So one measure that's already being used by some of your articles. Um, you can't just make up the questions you get to ask. And that's true of the real world too. There's, it's a lot more than just making up the questions you want to ask. Um, you get to do that sometimes, but it's usually a lot more work than it sounds like it because you, you know, we as scientists care that you're actually measuring something real, um, that you're measuring what you're saying you're measuring, and that takes research. Um, so even when you make up your own questions, you have to do a lot of extra steps before anyone will take you seriously. So step one, think what is the next logical step? So how can you move, you know, research is usually moving the field one little bit bitty baby step forward from where it was before um, rather than reaching for the stars and especially because this study is so simple because it needs to be easy to write about uh, and you're not actually doing the study it's just be okay with what it is um, the students who get really excited and really caught up in the process it often doesn't go well for them um, and so that's why I have you start with the measures that other people are using that you're reading about. Uh, another place to look is what are you, you know, what are you seeing as the limitations and what are you recommending for future research? You're not required to use one of those for your study, but it's a good place to start. Um, it might be, for example, I talk about ADHD as a great example because um, boys are more likely to be diagnosed than girls, but we know it presents differently in girls. And so we think it's underdiagnosed in girls and maybe even overdiagnosed in boys. So you might say, well, let's repeat this study, but let's see if girls and boys respond differently to this intervention. So let's say there's an intervention about sitting on bouncy balls in the classroom to help kids um, kind of fidget naturally and instead of getting up and running around the room. And we would say, okay, that was a great study, but you used like 90% boys. We don't know if this works the same way for girls that it works for boys. It might, it might not. We don't know until we test it. That's the scientific method. And so you might say, okay, we are going to, um, and in this case, you know, in the real world, you would use a control group, but for here, you have to only have two groups. And so if you're comparing girls versus boys, just give everybody the bouncy balls and see if fidgeting, if the change in fidgeting is different between girls and boys. So you're really seeing, does one group benefit more from this intervention than the other group? So you need something that's very, very simple. And it's often, you know, it's easy to not realize how many variables you actually have in a study. Um, you, all, you really get two variables here. Two is what you can work with. And so if you have boys and girls, you really only have one thing you can measure and they both have to have the same experience. If you're dividing them based on age, gender, race, um, medical history, psychological history, 
Um, if you're dividing them into groups based on a thing, that's your first variable. You only get one more. Um, you can also choose to, you know, you can, you can design something with a control group, but then you can't say compare men and women um, because now your comparison is control and experimental. So you do have some choices here. You can design an experimental study where you, you know, you assign half the people to one group and half the people to the, excuse me, the other, or you can do a quasi-experimental study, which is where you have two naturally occurring groups like men and women, boys and girls, um, over 30 and under 30, um, overweight, obese, whatever you want to do, and you are looking to see if they're different. It's quasi-experimental because you can't assign someone. You can't assign someone to be male or female um, or to be a certain age. You, these are already existing, and so we don't know for sure if these differences are really because you are biologically male or biologically female because there's so much else that goes along with it. But we can predict, okay, in the future we can know this tends to happen for boys versus girls. Um, and then you are going to choose one of two types of questions. So the first one is this quasi-experimental one I've been talking about. So are these two groups different on one variable? Or you can say, does a change in one variable cause a change in another variable? Either way, you're going to be using a t-test to test it. So everybody's going to be writing about the same test. I know most of you haven't had stats yet. That's okay. Um, I give you the language you need. And hopefully some of this will come back to you when you take stats. You're like, oh, yeah, I talked about that. I, I've heard p-value before. Um, and especially once you get to experimental psych, a lot of this should start to really gel and make more sense to you. Um, you will need to identify the independent variable and the dependent variable. Um, I have some guides here. Usually whatever you are grouping them based on is the independent variable. That's what creates your groups because that's the one that you can kind of change and do whatever you want with. Um, now, obviously, like you can't change what someone's sex is. You can't change whether someone has had a death loss or not, um, at least not ethically. Um, but it's this one, it's kind of the one that moves first. And then the dependent variable is the outcome. That's the one that changes based on what the independent variable is. Um, don't say you have proven anything. Um, if you're using the quasi-experimental, you can't even really say that you think it causes it. You can just say, we think they're associated. So we think that when one happens, the other tends to happen also. We can't say which one start causes which. Um, and then for, this, for the first assignment, you're going to write up two possible research questions. I'm going to give you feedback on both. I might tell you, hey, this one is a lot stronger. I really strongly think you should use this one. Um, but I'll tell you which one to go with. And then you kind of get, you know, you get your choice of which one. But know that I really need to be happy with it by the time you're done. And I, you know, again, even if you have this wonderful idea, if it doesn't fit this really tiny mold, I'm going to say no, because when I've let students do things that don't fit the mold on this training wheels paper, it doesn't go well. Um, and so this is, re and you know, often I didn't realize how much harder it was going to be for them to try to make their own path with this other approach. And yeah, it's really cool, but by the end, they generally say, I kind of wish I had just done something a little more simple. Um, so I've learned for this starting paper, it's really important to just find a question that fits um, and it's okay. It's fine. It's fine to be fine. Um, I hope though that this does feel like a process you get to be creative in. You get to put your own stamp on things. Um, and even though these are really strict guidelines, you still have a lot of different things you can choose within any topic. And so I hope you'd still feel empowered to think like a scientist and make your own decisions. This is one of the most exciting parts of the paper. Thanks. Bye.